That's a really good one. favorite time of day and it's just so peaceful I'm not gonna get too badly sunburned I can't possibly and it's just perfect you in ages. We are at the shore for the week. We've been here for honestly a good few days and it's been amazing but I just got back from the beach. I came back early just to have some quiet time to be able to film um, over here like with all my cousins. So it's been really great and I have been on such a reading kick just like one book after the next that is just like exactly what I'm looking for. I read um, 
the Dawn Hounds. I don't know how to pronounce the author's name, but it's like a near future speculative fiction um, bio work post apocalyptic and post war novel um, with a bunch of like queer characters and a, a lot of talk about um, kind of socioeconomics. And it was just like amazing. I loved it and I realized it's the beginning of a series. I don't know if it's a, just a two book series or what. Um, just doing my scrunch. My, hair's ha my hair has been um, honestly pretty good this week, but it's just the salty air. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Like, I think one of my favorite books so far this year, a lot about mushrooms. And I think honestly, that book is perfectly suited for people who loved City of Saints and Mad Men. Really all of the Ambergris novels, because there's a lot of similarities and themes and tones um, and a lot of like that bio work coming through like the world building in that book in Dawn Hounds is I don't actually know what the title is referring to maybe I missed something um, a world that has since a war broke out the world is or the city is rebuilding and getting rid of like metal and steel and um, replacing everything with like mushroom homes and um, biological warfare is rampant so if you loved City of Saints and Mad Men, I think you would love this one. If you also really enjoyed or are interested in Tade Thompson series that I just finished, the Wormwood or the Rosewater, no, it's the Wormwood trilogy. I think you would also really like this one. Now I am reading The Mountain in the Sea, which is super cool. It is about an advanced octopus community that is being discovered but at the same time there are some different like private firms getting involved buying up large swathes of island land people being kicked out of their homes um, and you know rehomed and it is chaotic and really actually a fun read but really sciencey and cool I also brought sorry I have like multiple makeup bags but I haven't separated my summer makeup into a separate place. I'm trying to not really wear makeup on the beach or at the beach. I don't wear makeup to the beach. Um, but I have just been having like more hormonal breakouts and they're always around my chin. It's not a new issue. This has been a couple years now. Um, they thought it was perioral, perioral dermatitis. I don't even know how to say it uh, but I know a lot of people have that specifically women like 18 to 40 which is a massive age group um, but then they said it wasn't that because it was hormonal I can't even see myself in this thing um so it comes and goes I half of them what bothers me more than like the active breakouts are all of the scars like I have like, very dark red marks and I try to pass them off as freckles because I really can't see um, you know my freckle game has been on point but I don't know that they appear as freckles it's like pretty intense around my chin and they're just a bummer absolute mood killer um, and I have been to a dermatologist many many times I switched dermatologists because I didn't like the guy um, and basically my new doctor who I think is really great has said that there's things I can do to get rid of the scars um, they're not really textured scar textured scars they're really just like pigment scars but they're not gonna go away with like you know some of those um, topical treatments that a lot of people are able to use like that won't work for me just because I'm so fair and they're like very very dark and I've had them for some of these scars going on like three years so there's not much to be done um, with topical treatments but he has recommended a few things I could do the problem is I can't have active breakouts because that would be like a waste of money if I start to do scar removal things and I still have active breakouts that will again leave scars because I'm so fair so it's like kind of a, a waiting game um, and I've been on a couple of different 
oral medications and blah 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 blah. It's not interesting unless you're really into like skincare stuff and I'm honestly not. If I didn't have this problem I would not be into skincare at all. Um, so yeah, I'd really just like to use my concealer because it is just very upsetting to have marks on my face always. And then I just cake on the blush. Putting blush on top of everyday rosacea, on top of a little bit of sun, just does something to me. I think it's perfect. Um, so tonight we're going to be doing some cocktails, some games. We want a late night on the beach one night, but the wind has been crazy on the beach. It like stings your skin. It's that bad. Um, it's like whipping up in sheets onto your face. Um, so we'll probably have a night at the house today and then maybe go on a walk to the bay, play some games. Um, But not much else is going on. I did take off for four of the five days of this work week just to fully enjoy myself. Um, last time we were here two years ago, I was working at a, a different job and didn't take any of the days off because I was new and I felt uncomfortable and it was like my first career track job out of college. And I would not recommend I shed many tears because I was working like crazy hours and was not able to hang out with my family at all. I decided to take off a couple of days and it's been good. It's been really, really fun. Actually, exciting news since I've last spoken to you. Sorry, I'm using my phone because this viewfinder thing is not effective. Um, exciting news since I last spoken to you. I did get a promotion at work which is super exciting. I am very, very happy about it. So that's something good. But yeah, I've just been like really loving my reading recently. I'm finding some great speculative, speculative fiction reads that I haven't actually heard of before. I know The Mountain and the Sea is actually pretty popular, but I was in a, um, a store the other day. I was actually at Barnes & Noble. Why was I there? I don't remember why I was there, but there was a whole table of like mushroom inspired books and the Dawn Hounds was one of them and I never heard of it, picked it up and ended up loving it. Um, and then I also brought the second book in the Farseer, or, or yeah, I think it is the Farseer trilogy, the one with Fitz um, that I read a couple weeks ago at the cottage. I don't know that I'll get to it this week just because the mountain and the sea is pretty hefty. But it's, it's just really good. It's like a perfect beach read. Actually really cool. Some great sciencey ideas. Jeff Vandermeer himself um, is quoted on the front cover hyping this book up. Because it is like an eco-thriller, kind of psychological, really, really interesting. There's some like AI and some human masking androids. You know. It's right up my alley. So that's it. I continue to scrunch scrunch away. I've also been running here. It's it's so nice to run here because honestly one of my favorite things to do at the shore is to go on long walks or runs and look at all of the houses. That's one of my favorite things to do here. Um, to imagine if I could get any house, which would I get? And so I've been running at least two or three times. Um, just like three miles, I, I feel like that's where I cap. I know if I went slower, I could probably go longer, but it's just hot and I'm really just starting to get into the running thing. So three miles is basically what I feel I can do right now. But obviously every time I'm hoping to go like a couple more, a couple more um, streets. And then today I went on a very, very long bike ride because we rented bikes. Um, so that was really nice again to just look at all the houses. but. The bike ride to my destination was brutal because of the wind and then on the way back it was more relaxing and a little bit more pleasant. Um, but yeah, it's been great just to like actually get out of the city, some fresh air. You know this is what I need. It's restorative. It's very needed for my mental health. <laughs> I did get a pretty bad sunburn on, on my chest 
and like my armpits the first day we were here because we didn't have all of our stuff set up so I wasn't under an umbrella even though I covered myself in lotion um, so that's upsetting because I do try to actually take care of my skin we are a family of, of skin cancer scares um, so obviously I'm very aware of that but then I do have like this very weird like hive breakout on my chest and I I don't know what it's from but it's not a sunburn it's like big welts and hives um, I thought it could be from like a couple necklaces I was wearing and then obviously a like sunscreen and bug spray and aloe I don't know but it's it's localized to this one spot so my skin is like very another super early morning we got here for like one of the most beautiful sunrises we have seen so far there were dolphins everywhere it was glorious but I actually left my book in somebody else's beach bag yesterday and we left the house at like 5 45 so I wasn't gonna go rummaging around so instead I um, went back and started catching up on my book notes and I didn't have everything with me, so I started taking notes specifically around the Dawn Hounds, which I said I just finished. Um, and the author's name is Sashta Stronach. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I definitely did not do a good job of um, explaining what this book is about and helping it get to my ambergris loving friends because this book was like really incredible. It's a futuristic post-revolutionary war novel set in a city called Hanik, Hanik um, that is rebuilding post-war, um, but it's also on the brink of anarchy and um, attack constantly. And that is where we kind of set up with our main character, Yacht, um, who is a woman on the police force. She's a queer woman on the police force. And at the start of the novel, it's clear that she was caught either at like a gay bar or a gay club. Um, and she has been like demoted on the force. And now she is in danger because these people know this, that she's queer. Um, because parliament was imposed in this city after the war to give it like some some structure and some authority and some stabilization but it has been infiltrated by this bird cult this priestum of bird men who are described in like a really scary and odd way um who have infiltrated the parliament the police force um and they are like yachts in danger and people like yacht are in danger so that's where we kind of set up but the world building in this book and this is why i think it would be like a perfect book for some city of saints and madmen people it is a city who's kind of divided into like a north and a south based on like socioeconomics um and the wealthy are kind of hoarding this new bio work because it's kind of out with the old in with the new it's out with a lot of metal and steel and that kind of weaponry as well and also like 
homes and buildings and structures and in with this new bio work. So the way that some of the homes are described, they're actual mushrooms and the gills are described in a really cool way. And Yacht lives in one of these mushrooms and the mushrooms can um, stay alive just living off of the homeowner's sweat and doesn't need a lot of nutrients. So she describes like these city streets where bio work has taken over and there's a really stark contrast between that and then going across the wall um, where a lot of these um, these wealthy people are using bio work illegally to, you know, like in the capital in Hunger Games where they like do things to themselves because they have this exorbitant wealth and there's this one scene or two scenes where these people are described with having used bio work and hired people out to have his eyes become beehives and he has like insects crawling across his face and then a woman who's has this structured skirt that is as you get closer it becomes clear it's like human flesh like these really weird things that like I, I just love that type of stuff um so basically at the start of the novel our jumping off point is that Yacht is murdered. Um, she's out on patrol one night and she is attacked and murdered in like a really brutal and horrific way. She comes back to life because of reasons that will unfold. Um, and she is trying to discover who murdered her at the same time. It's becoming clearer and clearer that kind of a planned assault is about to happen on the city um, with this biological warfare. So there's a lot of different players. Magic comes into play. Queerness is really strong throughout the novel because Yad is actually taken into this community who lives on a boat under the tutelage of a woman named Sibby who is like a pirate queen who's been alive for centuries. Um, it's just like perfectly done and it does get kind of chaotic and there are some things that happen like off screen that you don't see that you're kind of catching up on but the world building is like my favorite type of world building it's not um like the novel on the plot doesn't stop to explain stuff to you but we realize the way that the politics are moving and the way the world is set up and we see all of these things through like yacht's experiences her patrol duties um where she ends up who she communicates with it's like really really cool um but it, it does get like very dark, but I think it stays like really smart and interesting throughout. I wouldn't describe it as like a super fun book. Like the mountain and the sea is more fun, um, you know, like a China Mieville kind of weird and disturbing, but a fun, like thriller esque. This does have thrilling moments, but it's more, um, I don't know. I just thought it was like, it was really, really good. And I am very excited to, to read the next one. It's the end song endings what is the series called i i didn't even know it was this it could have ended with that book um but they do leave some things unresolved at the end of the novel um some main characters are kind of setting off north and something might happen um the series is called the end song so the second book what is it i don't even know if it's out yet Oh, The Sunforge. It is out. Yeah. Sasha Stronach returns in this queer, Maori inspired Enzong series about a police officer back from the dead who will stop at nothing to save her city from the evil that threatens to destroy it. Perfect for fans of Gideon the Ninth, Gideon the Ninth and the Black Sun. I haven't read either of those books. Um... But also, if you love the Amber Green novels, and if you're interested in, like, the Tade Thompson style of writing and world building, I think this will also appeal to you. I'm super excited to read this. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting in the car. My boyfriend was throwing his last few casts, and then we're going to go get breakfast. I need my coffee. I have just not been sleeping. Again, I, I don't sleep on my trips. Um, but also, we have, like, a full house, and we're playing games, and we're doing all these things. And I just feel like antsy. Um, we're going to go get breakfast at a place. So we've been coming to this specific beach town for 29 years. So obviously before my time. But my parents' generation and everyone has been coming here for 29 years to the same beach town. So more than anything, it's like nostalgia at its peak. Um, I'm like so, so happy when I'm here. And it just makes me think of like my grandparents and my cousins when we were all little. And we just had like 
I had the time of my life here. Um, so we're going to the breakfast place that my grandpa used to always take like all of the grandchildren because there's a lot of us. Um, so it just makes me think of him and you know, I just love it here. So that's what we're doing. And then today I think some people are going to go paddle boarding. I would like to go for a run, but I want to get out before it gets too hot because I'm not built for the heat. I'm not built that way. I also don't want to get super sunburned. I've been really trying. Um, and then, yeah, I am working tomorrow, but waking up this early, it feels like I have my own time before I start working. So it's pretty good. So I'm just going to wait around. Um, so actually how I do my book notes and it's not a good system, but I have my notebook here and I basically, while I'm reading, I don't touch my notebook because I can't like it slows me down. So I just take notes on my phone in the notes tab and app, whatever it's called. And then I also take photos of like specific quotes or sections that I want to write down later. So when I have to go and take notes, it's like jumping back between my, my notes and my pictures to take, um, just like a recap of the book and specific quotes. So it's not a perfect system, but I have tried to take notes as I go. That's what I used to do. And it just really slowed me down. I felt like I wasn't like fully immersed in the book cause I was stopping. Cause I like, I love to capture specific quotes. Um, but you know, I do get behind, but my favorite books are the ones that I like jump right away to take notes. Like I have Booth in here, Fingersmith, Dragon Keeper, um, just from this year. But I have been thinking that about my year of reading. I know we're only like halfway through, um, but there are definitely some things that I really, really want to get to this year, but we can talk about those later. But yeah, I'm just going to relax until we have coffee. He needs you to pop the truck. He keeps... <laughs>